We first told you yesterday about some serious allegations made by one of Fargo's major health care providers. Essentia Health says that they've noticed a trend where FM Ambulance is disregarding patient requests to be taken to Essentia, opting instead for their parent company, Sanford. However, Sanford says they adamantly deny any wrongdoing. Valley News Live's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley did some digging into the claims and joins us live in the studio with more. Bailey. Mike, Andrea, I talked with Essentia officials today and they say they have filed grievances with FM Ambulance in the past. However, they do not have the exact number of times that their patients wishes to be transported to Essentia have been ignored. Essentia also says they have not filed any formal complaints with the North Dakota Department of Health. However, they do say they are working with the department on the issue. Essentia says the problem comes into play only in non-critical situations, saying there are already protocols in place for EMS personnel when a patient needs life-saving care like a heart attack or stroke. In those situations, an ambulance must bring the patient to the closest hospital. However, in a case of a broken leg, the patient has the option to request which hospital they are brought to, and that is where Essentia says the issue lies. I talked with several people who say they've had similar situations happen happened to them. However, no one wanted to talk on camera today. Essentia says they don't plan on filing any complaints with the Department of Health, saying they just want their patients' requests to be respected. Andrea. All right. Thanks, Bailey. To read Sanford's full statement, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. The rain moved on. That's good. But for many folks to the east of us, they're wrestling with some unwanted snow. We don't want you to wait, wait anymore to find out what's happening around here for tonight. So let's get the latest from Justin Fanfarelli with your no wait weather. Justin. And thank you, Mike and Andrea. Good evening, everybody. Yes, the snow mainly missed our viewing area off to the south and to the east. And uh, we are seeing the opposite today compared to yesterday. A lot of sunshine out there. That's going to be the case over the next couple of hours. Temperatures falling back through the 50s. Mainly Mainly clear skies this evening. It will be cool and the breezy conditions will start to uh, die off a little as we'll see uh, calm winds through most of the overnight. Temperatures around the region right now into the lower 50s across the Devil's Lake Basin, northwestern Minnesota, everybody else into the mid to upper 50s right now. But we can't get rid of that breezy northerly wind of 15 to 25 miles per hour, pumping it in the cool air and keeping us cool for this time of year. Some clouds across our Minnesota counties. Everybody else is seeing mainly sunny skies. We'll tell you what to expect as we round out the work week and go through the weekend. That's coming up a little later on in the newscast. All right, thanks. Vice President Mike Pence was in Glendon, Minnesota earlier today to speak with farmers about a new trade deal under President Trump's administration. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz has more on the farmers' recent struggles and their hopes for this new deal. Vice President Mike Pence heard farmers' concerns. And I think we just want the, the certainty in the future for farms to um, be able to continue on. And encouraged support for a new trade deal early Thursday on a Glendon, Minnesota farm. The president has done his job, and I'm here to say it is time for Congress to do their job and approve the USMCA this year. The U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement would replace the current trade deal, NAFTA. NAFTA was a, a great start, and uh, but it was 24 years old, and it was time to update and, and get a fresh view on it. Farmers at the event tell Valley News Live they've taken a huge hit in recent years with trade wars under the current administration. Last year when the president and his cabinet announced that they were going to have some uh, tariffs put on, China and other countries, I mean, we saw a sharp, sharp decline in the price of beans, especially. There's a lot of people hurting. I've seen young farmers quitting. They have no choice. The revenue does not even come close to the input costs. The president on Sunday tweeting a threat to raise a tariff on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports from 10% to 25%. As President Trump has made clear, we're, we're prepared to continue to expand on the tariffs that we've implemented um, because things have to change in our relationship with China. Some farmers see that as a hindrance to the USMCA. We have two trade deals out there that aren't complete. We have one with a huge trading partner in China, and then we have another with our neighbors who are huge trading partners. We need to get 
something done. But overall, farmers are optimistic for the deal. Basically, we can export more dairy products into Canada than we were with NAFTA. And so that's why it's, it's an improvement. In Glendon, Minnesota, Rose Iskovitz, Valley News Live. In addition to needing to pass through Congress, the new trade deal would still need to be ratified in Mexico and Canada. The 27-year-old man is facing multiple charges following a rollover crash in South Fargo. Yesterday, crews were sent to 4900 block of Rose Creek Parkway South. They found a blue car resting on its rooftop in the boulevard. The two occupants were already out of the vehicle when officers arrived. The driver, 27-year-old Trent Allen Klingman of Fargo, and a two-year-old child passenger in the car. Klingman told the officer he lost control of the vehicle as he entered a curve in the roadway while speeding. Klingman stands charged with driving under the influence with a minor in the vehicle and aggravated reckless endangerment. His blood alcohol content was twice the legal limit. Moorhead police are still investigating an incident that left one woman in the hospital with a stab wound. The incident happened Wednesday evening in the 2400 block of 4th Avenue South at a South Moorhead apartment complex. Police say two women were involved in a fight and one of them ended up with a stab wound. The woman who police believe started the fight was taken to the hospital for treatment, but there's no word yet on how badly she was injured. An officer with the department tells us this was not a random attack and there's no threat to the public. A Moorhead man is accused of sexually assaulting a minor in Bismarck. Authorities say 44-year-old Viet Doan is accused of touching a minor in November while in Bismarck. He was charged yesterday. Doan is charged with two counts of sexual assault. People caught with small amounts of marijuana in North Dakota will not spend time in jail. This comes after Governor Doug Burgum signed a bill into law. House Bill 1050 reclassifies possession of up to a half ounce of marijuana by adults 21 and older as an infraction punishable by no jail time and a maximum fine of $1,000. Previously, it was a misdemeanor punishable by up to 30 days in jail in addition to a fine. The bill also reclassifies penalties for possession offenses involving amounts greater than a half ounce. Firefighters from Tower City and Valley City responded to burning hay bales on a semi-trailer on an eastbound lane of I-94 southeast of Ariska today. Investigators still don't know what started the fire. They tell us the driver of the semi was able to detach the tractor from the trailer before fire crews arrived. No one was hurt. The hay bales were eventually pushed off the trailer and burned in the south ditch of I-94 as fire crews watched for hot spots and contained the burning hay bales. Drivers in southwest Minnesota may see smoke from a planned burn tomorrow, May 10th, as crews conduct a controlled burn on Highway 75 north of Euclid. And in the coming weeks, two sites in northwestern Minnesota will be burned, weather permitting. Drivers will encounter signs as they approach the burn areas, warning of the smoke potential. Drivers are asked to pay attention and watch for the burn crews who are monitoring these efforts. Anglers have to be pumped for tomorrow's fishing opener 2019 in Minnesota. The DNR is getting ready for the big event as well. Officers want to remind participants to dress for the weather and be aware that water temps are cooler than normal. It's also not a bad idea to do some double checking before hitting the water. Really, they need to make sure that they do a little pre-planning and make sure they have the licenses they need and the registration on their boats and that everything works uh, so that you're not flustered when you get to the access. Anglers should also remember to check your boats for invasive species once they're out of the water. Later on Valley News Live at 6, cleanup week is coming to a close. What to do with your unwanted electronics. And a cool day today, starting off at 34, and we made it into the upper 50s, but we should be into the upper 60s this time of year. But we have above average temperatures on the horizon. We'll tell you when coming up next.